Hello, I'm Chris from Rewilding Us and we're in the middle of April. I've come out on a walk this morning in the local field and I've come across what I believe to be St George's mushrooms. And today we're going to run through the ID process to determine whether these are St George's mushrooms and an edible species I'm going to be putting in my basket and taking home with me. So the reason I believe them to be St George's mushrooms is because A, because of the coloration of them and they're growing in almost a ring as you can see here and because we're in April it's most likely that these are going to be St George's mushrooms. Uh, there are various other species of fungi that grow throughout the year most particularly in autumn that have white caps and grow in fields next to woodlands, woodlands edges. Um, but because we're in spring, it's almost a certainty that these are going to be St George's mushrooms. However, I'm a strong believer that seasonality is quite a weak factor when it comes to mushroom identification. Um, this is one of the rare occasions, in my opinion, that seasonality plays a strong factor uh, in mushroom identification. Usually if it says, if the books say a mushroom fruits maybe April um, and a different species that looks similar that might fruit in May, um, you know, you're really splitting hairs there because they can fruit earlier and later than what the books are depicting. Um, but the fact that these are fruiting in April and generally other species that are gonna look similar fruit in the latter end of the summer um, or in the autumn the gap is much wider there so it creates a stronger factor um, for identification in terms of seasonality and again we've got habitat so habitat we're in an open field uh, short grasslands we're next to woodlands this is the exact kind of habitat that St George's would be growing in typically they're going to grow in rings not in all cases I'll be able to show you some that are not growing in a ring in a moment as well um, but typically you're going to find them in a ring or a partial ring in a field um, or in woodland edges. So then my next step, I'm going to remove my gloves because the ground's pretty wet and I don't like getting my gloves wet. So then my next step is going to be picking one of the mushrooms and taking a closer look at it. So St George's mushrooms Calisai gambosa, uh, they're in the dome cap family, a grouping called the dome cap, which is the common name. Um, so I can see here that the cap is domed, and when I flip it over, underneath it's got very crowded gills. It's got a nice stout stem, no bulbous base, no vulva on the base, which is important. There's no ring either, no skirt. So the gills are nice and white, um, but your, your real main identifier for St George's mushroom is its smell. Uh, so we go through the visual features of the fungi, you do your visual inspections, and if all indicators are suggesting that it's going to be a St George's mushroom, an edible species, then you, your next step is you're going to be smelling the mushroom to find out if it has the smell that is depicted Largely you get that from the books, there's also lots of great online resources, lots of videos, good videos like this one you'll be able to watch and um, you'll be able to pick up cues and tips from foragers. But the smell should be strong, quite a strong smell and it's described as farinaceous which basically means starchy. It's often described as smelling like dough or flour. Um, some people have had some feedback, some people have said that they can't smell the dough, the flowery type smell, um, but they can smell watermelon. Um, so we all have our own, our own kind of unique senses and we see colours slightly differently, we smell things slightly differently, perhaps we hear things slightly differently. So it's important to understand that um, some of the smells might not be um, as accurate as what they say in the books, but um, if lots of other people are having similar experiences with the fungi, uh, plants or fungi, then it's something that is gonna, you're going to be able to relate to and help narrow down your identification.
So for me this smells strongly farinaceous and it smells a lot like dough and occasionally when I pick them fresh I do get hints of watermelon now it's been mentioned to me however until that had been mentioned to me all I could smell was dough um, so I'm very sure at this stage that this is a St George's mushroom now with some of the other species that you would need to be aware of um, as I say seasonality is quite a weak uh, identification feature. Um, some of the other species that you would really need to be aware of, particularly in the Amanita family and the Amanitas, they have white gills as well and you do have at least one species uh, that's pure white, um, a little bit like the St George's here, uh, and that's the Destroying Angel. Uh, with the Amanita family, they all emerge from a vulva, from an egg sac, so it would have a very bulbous base on the bottom and there would be remnants of an egg sac around the base typically as well and they almost all of them have a ring um, around the stipe as well um, but again the ring it could be there it could be missing through weathering or um, just age so again the ring isn't really an, a great feature to be going by but if you can see one then that's fantastic because that's going to indicate that it's not a St George's it's potentially in the Amanita family and it's something you're going to be want, wanting to be very wary of. Um, and as I said before, uh, species in the Entoloma family, the Entolomas are called the pink gills so the gills will start off pale, uh, so orca, and then they're going to go pink with age. Um, so your gills are really going to be the thing that separates apart the um, St George's and uh, the livid pink gill. And Potentially a deadly fibre cap, you could confuse it for that. Again, these all fruit much later on in the year. It's really unlikely you're going to see them at this time of year. Um, with the deadly fibre cap, the cap is much more fibrous and uh, it bruises red as well um, if you press it or cut it. Um, so that's going to rule out that for you as well. Um, so if you are a novice forager you're going to want to take extra steps to learn the anatomical parts, the anatomical features of the fungi and um, learn more about some of the other species and particularly the patterns that can help narrow down uh, which grouping, which family of fungi you're in because that's going to help you rule out any potentially poisonous species. And um, So I'm very happy here that we've got a nice concentric ring of St George's mushrooms which are a really good edible. Uh, they're quite hardy mushrooms, I find them they're quite slow growing in comparison to like the agarics for example. Uh, you can leave these for almost a week and let them develop, let them grow into full size before you come back and pick them, if you can beat somebody else to them um, of course. Um, they're really great in pasta dishes and in soups, in creamy dishes um, because of the dough flavour as well they go great on toast and in terms of medicinal benefits they're high in B vitamins, high in proteins uh, they do contain vitamin C and they're packed full of antioxidants some of which are very good at um, preventing colon cancer one other thing you can do with these fungi is um, you do a, what's called a cross section and for a cross section you simply cut the mushroom straight down the middle of the stipe and through the middle of the cap and then these mushrooms here um, they're very meaty they're dense in texture and the stipe is full of flesh it's not a hollow stipe the stipe's full of flesh and you can take a closer look at the gills as well when you have done a cross section on them um, you can see the cap is very full and the gills are quite small in comparison to the cap size and um, it can vary in colour they're kind of creamy white inside but it's been raining really heavily the last few days um, so when they're flushed with moisture um, they can go a little bit off colour as well um, so don't be too alarmed about that if you see them slightly off colour um, inside, particularly after it's been raining. 
So, yep, doing a cross section on them can be beneficial, certainly to begin with. But like I say, your key identifier, other than the initial visual features, is the smell. And particularly when you cut them, they're going to smell even stronger uh, than when you just pick them straight from the ground. So, I hope you find this information useful. Good luck at finding yourself some St George's mushrooms in the spring.